Okay, so we're in module 14, and this is section 3, working with employees. Now, in this previous section, we talked a little bit about setting up those payroll items. Those are the things you would add to or deduct from an employee's paycheck. Now we're going to go in and actually set up the employees themselves. So we're going to come down to the home page and click on the Employee Center. Now, when you come into the Employee Center on the left-hand side, you're actually going to see each of the employees you already have set up. Whichever one you're clicked on, you're going to see their address, you're going to see some reports. Down at the bottom, you'll see any transactions for that employee, so mostly paychecks pretty much, any to-dos, notes, or sent emails. Now, if you were going to set up a new employee, you would just click New Employee and set it up. But let's go ahead and double-click, which is the same thing as this Manage Employee Information here. And then that'll take us in so we can look at what you would set up if you were setting up a new employee. So notice over on the left, we're on the first tab called Personal. And this is where you're going to put in the employee's name. You can also print in their name if they want it printed a little differently when you print the checks. You can see a place for their Social Security, their gender, their date of birth, marital status, U.S. citizen, yes or no, and their ethnicity. On the right, if you have a disabled employee, you can put in if they're disabled or not and their disability description. If they get an I-9, you can put in that you have one on file and the work authorization expires on a particular date. And if they're military, you can say yes or no, they're a U.S. veteran and the status. So this part over here is new for this version. Now let's look at the address and contact. This is pretty self-explanatory. This is where you put in their address and their phone number and their fax and all that stuff. Notice at the bottom there is a place for emergency contact info as well. Now the additional info tab. If you have employee ID numbers you can actually put it in this field. And on the right these are those custom fields we've been looking at when we looked at customers and vendors. So again if you wanted to add one for just employees you could say define new field here and add it. Okay, so the next tab over is the payroll info. Now, the first thing is the payroll schedule. Let me tell you what that means. And I'll just click the drop down here. So if you want to add a new one, you'd click Add New. If you have a company where you have a lot of employees, you might have a certain group of employees that are paid weekly. There might be another group that's paid bi-weekly. You can set up the schedule so it knows when you pick weekly, which employees get paid, or when you pick bi-weekly, which employees get paid. Obviously, if it's bi-weekly, the pay frequency is bi-weekly. Now, there's also the class option if you're using the class feature there. Now, down on the left here, this is where the earnings portion is. This employee is salaried, and it looks like he makes $41,500 per year. Don't put in an hourly rate here if you pick salary. Now, if they were an hourly rate employee, then what you would do is you'd pick from the list the regular pay, and you'd put over here how much they get paid per hour. Now, if this is an employee that frequently works overtime, then you may want to come down and pick overtime rate, and notice it knows the calculation automatically. So it doesn't mean every time they get paid they get overtime, it just means when you want to use it, that field is already there. Now, over on the right is where if you have the additions or deductions, you can add those. So if you had a mileage reimbursement, you would set it up and you would put over here how much you're reimbursing them per mile. Now, here's the direct deposit option. So if you're going to be directly depositing, then you need to go ahead and set that up with your bank. And there's a whole setup for the bank in this particular section here. Now, I know you can't see this on my screen because it's a little larger, but this button right over here to the right says Taxes, and this is an important button to fill out because this is where you're going to say if they're federal, their state, or if their filing status is married, that kind of thing. So starting with federal, here's the filing status, and you can see your options, single, married, married using single rate or don't withhold. How many allowances do they claim? And if they want you to keep any extra withholding, go ahead and keep it here. Also, is this employee subject to Medicaid, Social Security, Advanced Earned Income Credit, and Federal Unemployment? 
So if they're not subject to any of these, you just uncheck it. The next tab over is your state. Notice it asks you which state does the employee work in and which state is it withholding in because that can be different. This is the state unemployment insurance, which is company paid, and this is the state disability insurance. So you check those again if your employee is subject to those. Now when you're talking about the subject to withholding here, you're also going to tell it how many allowances the employee claims and their filing status again over here on the right. Also if there's miscellaneous deductions you want to keep, then you're going to place that right here. Now the other would be other just generic weird taxes you might withhold, like this example's in California and they have this employee training tax. But make sure you set these up, don't forget that, because that's kind of the most important part of this whole thing. That's how it knows how much to deduct. All right, I'm going to click OK there. Now the next one is the employment info. So this is where you're going to have the hire date, you're going to have the release date, you're going to have information on what type of employee they are, are they part-time, full-time. And then there's a job detail section on the right. So I wouldn't fill this part out unless they have a particular supervisor you're wanting to track if you have a particular title and that sort of thing. But it's not really per job. It would only be if this employee works on this one job only. Now the middle tab is the leave of absence. So you can have a start date and an end date for that. If you want to put the reason, that sort of thing. And where it says leave paid, you can say yes or no. Are you going to pay their leave? And then the tab that says termination, you're going to be able to put in their termination dates, last date they got paid, termination types, if you recommend rehiring them, things like this. Now the last tab over is the workman's comp. And so what you're going to be able to do here is if you need to sign a workman's comp code, you can right here and you can pick it from the list. So that's pretty much the information you need to put in when you're actually setting up the employee. Now I'm going to go ahead and close this because once you get the employees set up, then you can go ahead and start talking about actually paying your employees. So I'll see you over in the next section, which is section four. Hi everyone, Simon here from Simon Says It. Thanks for watching this video. If you need additional training for QuickBooks Pro to help you effectively manage your small business, then check out our complete course for learning QuickBooks Pro 2015. It's an eight-hour course with over 70 video training tutorials. Just click the button right over there with additional information. I'll see you next week with more videos.